Hello and welcome to another Nuclear Craft update video. It's been a while since I last did one of these. It's been about two months. Um, that's because I've been away um, from university, so I haven't had much time to work on the mod. I've been basically doing loads of bug fixes the last week or so, um, and hopefully you guys have updated your mod. You're probably playing a mod pack or something. Um, there's a couple of mod packs out there, such as All the Mods 3 and Modern Skyblock 2, that are the main places where people are using Nuclear Craft, or at least downloading it. Um, so I think those are probably already updated to the mod, but if you haven't, um, then get 2.7a, that's the, the latest release. Um, and it will probably be the final release for um, 1.10 and 1.11. Um, I'm probably going to stop working on 1.10 and 11.2 um, because it just takes so much more time to work on two or three versions of the mod. Um, I'd rather focus on the, the version that a lot of people are using, uh, which is uh, 1.12.2, and get more content up for that for that update because, as I said, that's the one that everyone's using. If you just look at the difference in downloads, the 1.12 version has just got so many more downloads. It's it's not worth my time trying to keep updating these ones while you know most people are playing on the 1.12.2 and it speeds up massively for me because I don't have to work on three versions of the mod anymore. Um, so that's the first thing to say. I'm going to be working specifically on 1.12.2 from now on in, except for bug fixes obviously. Second of all, um, there's a new sort of area where wiki's being worked on, on the um, Gamepedia um, FTB wiki, the official FTB wiki. An awesome guy called Xenoflot um, has been working a lot on this wiki. Um, I'm sure there are others who have contributed but the main guy I know who's put a lot of hours into this is Xenoflot, well that's his name on GitHub anyway, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, you can, as you can see, they've added absolutely tons of stuff um, to this nuclear craft part of the wiki, and there is quite a lot of information there. Um, I've read through it briefly, like pretty much most of the pages. Most of the information there is correct, there's a few issues here and there that I've tried to fix, haven't done it all, um, but basically most of the information here, probably 95% of the information here is correct and up to date, um, so I highly recommend this. Um, if you're if you want more information than the tooltips give um, or don't have JEI or whatever um, there's loads of information here for you so hopefully that's useful um, it's much better than the old wiki we had which was a mess um, people kept translating it to Russian for example which was a bit of a bit of a shame because it meant that pretty much no one could read it um, but all this is in English and working perfectly so thank you very much to all those who have contributed to this wiki um, and hopefully it will keep growing as the mod does so now that we've got out of the way, um, let's actually work on um, what has been added. Um, first of all in 2.6 and then 2.7. Most of the stuff has been bug fixes. You can read the change logs for all the bug fixes and stuff if you want. Um, pretty much all of it has just been fixes to machines not working properly with automation. Um, there was crash bugs with GUIs and stuff. Uh, other machines not working. A lot of 1.12 specific bugs because I was I rushed it out before I left. Um, but they're all fixed now. And thank you very much particularly to Footmos. Thutmose, or I think it's Thutmose, but I might be pronouncing that wrong. It's sort of hard to tell. I think that's how you pronounce it. Thank you very much to him, in particular, for helping me out a lot with um, some of the uh, machine bugginess. Um, he showed me a lot of methods that I didn't know about in the uh, in Minecraft Forge, um, and that really helped out and fixed loads of stuff. So thank you very much to him for sticking around on GitHub and helping me out. Um, and there's loads of other people. Um, I put the credits in the changelog. Um, people such as the guy running south, Fscan. Uh, Dizzy D, 28 Smiles, thank you very much for your contributions, uh, your uh, your commits, your pull requests that you submitted. And thank you for everyone else to, um, on GitHub who has put the bug, report, uh, bug reports on there and uh, notified me that there are issues with the mod. And hopefully I have fixed your bug. There's a few more additions and things that I haven't got around to yet, but when I came back home about a week ago, there were about 55 or something issues on GitHub, and I think there's about 11 now. So we've cut down a huge number of them, which is fantastic. So what actual additions have been added? I want to mainly go through the additions and the um, changes that will actually affect gameplay, i.e. weren't bugs, like actual changes that I meant, you know, meant to be in the game in the first place. Um, so first of all we have the Decay Generator. Decay Generator is sort of like an early game generator, so um, if we just get one of these you'll see the recipe for this is pretty simple. It's just some lead, cobble and redstone. Um, basically the way this works is it produces power from adjacent thorium and uranium blocks. Um, and over time the thorium and uranium blocks placed next to it will decay um, and produce a bit less power. So if I just put one um, uranium block here, um, you'll see that I'm generating 80 every second. Yeah. So that means yeah, 4 RF per tick per uranium block. That's by default. So 80 RF per second is the default for a uranium block. Um, thorium block is the same. Um, that generates um, 80 RF per second as well, so that's 4 RF per tick. So overall this um, generator at the moment is going to be generating uh, 8 RF per tick. Um, another thing is that thorium and uranium blocks can be shared 
by the decay generators. So both of the decay generators shall, will uh, get power from this one uranium block. But it does mean that that uranium block will probably decay about twice as fast. Um, so just keep that in mind. The, the, the uh, more decay generators using a, a uranium or thorium block, the quicker it will decay. Um, and if I just surround uh, this whole thing in thorium and uranium, uh, hopefully we'll just wait around for something to decay. The more I place around, the quicker something will decay, hopefully. And we'll just leave that for a bit. And when we come back at the end of this uh, spotlight, we'll see that some of these blocks will have decayed. And when the blocks have decayed, um, they'll still produce energy, but nowhere near as much. They'll only produce about half an RF per tick or 10 RF per second. Just keep in mind that uh, having six of these decay generators around a depleted block will generate uh, at maximum, if you want a pipe in there as well, will generate at maximum about two and a half RF per tick if you've got five around, um, which is less than an, uh, an RTG, a uranium RTG. So um, they're not as effective as uranium RTGs. As soon as you can make RTGs, uh, remember to make RTGs, you do need um, the plates. Um, but once, so once you can get those, I highly recommend getting the RTGs instead of the decay generators. This is meant to be very early game power. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, second thing that was changed was that um, fission controllers, um, well, fission reactors, really, um, the way their heat and um, energy buffers work is a bit different. So before, what used to happen is that they just had like a set heat, I can't, a set heat and set um, energy buffer. I can't remember what those were. I think the heat was like a million and energy might have been something like, I think it was 960,000. But now uh, the way it works is that it's dependent on the size of the reactor. So for every um, interior cube of the reactor structure, the energy stored will go up by 64,000 and the heat level will go up by 25,000. So if I just extend this reactor by um, by one block, so it's a two by one by one, then you'll see that the heat levels double to 50,000 and the energy stored is going up to 128,000. So basically for every interior block, um, the uh, buffer and the heat level goes up. Um, this was suggested by someone on uh, GitHub because basically the problem is that if you have a really, really big reactor, then sometimes it can produce more energy than the buffer can even deal with. And sometimes fluctuations in heat can be so massive that um, your heat level can just immediately um, go up to the maximum. Um, so this is just sort of to make um, the bigger reactors work properly. Um, so that was a good suggestion. And uh, there we go, that's fixed. And also um, the tooltips have been fixed. Uh, well, not tooltips, these are just numbers on the, on the GUI. Um, if these heat and RF numbers um, get too big, then it will convert automatically to killer RF and killer heat, and then mega RF and mega heat and so forth. So it will do the sort of SI unit um, scaling up through the uh, prefixes. Next thing, uh, you can obviously see that you just saw there that some of the, um, the tooltips look a bit nicer now. They give a bit more information. Uh, see here it says process power, speed multiplier, power multiplier. That's to tell you like what the speed upgrades are doing. So if I put more speed upgrades in there, um, speed upgrade, you'll see that if I increase the number of speed upgrades, you'll see the power and uh, multipliers go up. Um, if I put a lot in there such that um, the power uh, required by the fluid infuser goes above the buffer. So let's just put a bunch in there. You'll see that the, um, the actual buffer storage has actually gone up um, because the process power became too high. Um, so basically what will happen is that the energy buffer of a machine will be one of two choices. It will be the minimum of either 32,000 RF, so it will always be 32,000 RF at a minimum, or um, it will be double the power required. So any machine that requires more than 16,000 RF per tick will have its energy buffer set to double that processing power. Um, so that's just basically the standard rule. Uh, next thing, uh, just want to show off that this, all of these pipes and stuff work now. Um, so before this was broken, but thank you very much to Thutmose for fixing this. Um, it, it was mainly him. He put the pull request through and I fixed the, found the fix for the IC2 bug. So lots of bugs involved here. Basically the first bug is that some pipes such as thermal expansion or thermal dynamics pipes um, didn't play very nicely with these blocks when they updated, when they turned on and off. Um, but you can see here that when this completes, before in older versions of um, nuclear craft, what would happen is that when this finished, um, it would basically not pull out the uh, oxide fuel and it would also not uh, refill the buffer, which it has. So that's good. And second of all, when you turn on and off the machine, what used to happen is that the IC2 cable used to disconnect, uh, but that doesn't happen anymore either. So that is fixed. And that's, 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 that's really important because it basically meant that before automation was basically impossible. Um, but now it's possible, which is, which is nice. Uh, just what I should mention that the craft tweaker now works again. There was a couple of bugs with craft tweaker. So people making mod packs and stuff, um, craft tweaker support is working again. Um, so keep that in mind if you're making a mod pack. Um, next thing, oh yeah, fusion reactors. So the way these work now, a bit different. Um, well, the actual mechanics is pretty much the same, but the, the fusion plasma works a little bit differently now. Um, so uh, what happens now is that when the uh, one of the internal 
uh, buffers runs out of a fuel, so that basically the reactor can't run because it doesn't have enough fuel. Um, the plasma will disappear, so what used to happen is that you had to basically wait until the reactor cooled all the way down to below um, 8 um, me mega kelvin before. Um, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, the plasma will disappear as soon as the, uh, you know, the fuel is run out. Um, so uh, that is a bit more, makes a bit more sense. Um, so that's, I think that's better, which is nice. And again, some slightly better tooltips that um, deal with the power and uh, temperature getting too high. Um, so yeah, just fix that as well. So slightly more, um, you know, it makes a bit more sense now, the fusion reactor, when it runs out of fuel. Um, so that's that's nice. Uh, what else? We've also got over here, yeah, the cobblestone generator thing. This didn't work before. Uh, so you can see now that it's working. If I take out um, some cobblestone, you'll see that it will refill it with cobblestone. Uh, in 1.11 and 1.12, that wasn't working, but it now is. It's actually pulling out the cobblestone properly, so you can use your cobble gen again. Um, what else has happened? Oh yes, another bug which um, does actually change the game quite a lot um, was that basically what was happening before is that things like fission ports um, were not being treated as part of the reactor casing by coolers. Um, again, that was a nice bug report. Um, that's now being fixed, so you can put coolers like the water cooler and whatever other coolers need um, adjacent reactor casings. You can put them next to fission ports and buffers and stuff now, um, as you might expect. Um, so, so I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So yeah, as I said, not going to do any more for 1.10, 1.11. It's all going to be 1.12.2 from now on. New wiki, which is awesome. Thank you very much to everyone who's done that. And all of these new bugs and changes for 1.2, uh, for what's it called? 2.7a. Yeah, 2.7a. Right, so I highly recommend you get 2.7a. Um, and hopefully we can see some of these blocks of decayed, maybe. Um, it does take about, ah, here we go. Depleted thorium and depleted uranium. So you can see some of these blocks have decided to decay. Okay, so that, that works. Um, I think I've shown you everything. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.